Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. A pleasure to have you here with us in beautiful Cannes. Maybe you could kick off with a brief introduction to your film. What can people expect if they watch it? Um, I think maybe emotion uh, when you watch uh, more than ever. And uh, what I'm hoping is that the audience, when they leave the cinema or finish watching the film, maybe at home um, later on, is that they have the desire to converse, to talk. Because it's about um, a woman at, uh, and her desire to choose the perfect place and way for her to depart this planet, basically. Uh, and, um, and it's a, it's a film about emancipation of us humans who will all depart this planet uh, and that we are allowed to uh, voice our choice. But actually, it seems quite taboo that we, the living, don't let our, our partners or family or friends who are in that situation of leaving, leaving this earth, that we don't often ask them what they really want to do, if they want us around, if they want to be in the hospital or be at home or be raving. Uh, and it's about that. And it's a love story. It's a love story um, between Hélène and Mathieu, uh, who during most of the film, because of love, are on two different wavelengths. She's the one with a mortal sickness. He's the one full of lo love, selfish love, wanting to keep her going and is not listening to her desires. So that's what it's about. So emotion, but also a lot of light because we shot in the, one of the most beautiful places in the p planet, I find. It's uh, Norway in the summer where night does not exist and nature is like the fourth character in this film as well. Um, I understand it was, came from a very personal place, um, you know, with, with your mother, um, but it's also kind of been a bit of a labor of love in terms of the, the, the length of time it's taken from first writing it to being able to see it on screen. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I had the idea in 2010 um, and but already before that, already, you know, two th I, I already flirted a lot with film ideas about that part of our life. Because even as a child, it, it intrigued and fascinated me. Hearing stories about some animals, like wolves, who would uh, leave the pact uh, when sick uh, or dying uh, very discreetly and find their little place in the forest or their little place to, to die uh, in dignity and, and in, in peace and quiet. And that always, that always touched me in a way. And or it, in a way I, um, I, under, I, I could feel into that. And, uh, and that's where it started. And then in this long process, uh, during this time I did other films, of course, but I did need maturity and to really get the story. Uh, I found a co-writer after a few years, Lars Hubrich, and we started working together. And then I took it on again on my own because I had to really find my voice. Um, and during this period, yes, my mom had 22 years. She had MS. So that was always a big part of our, of our yeah, family in the sense that she was really into the alternative medicines. She went to China seven times and it was, uh, and then she, she got cancer and it was actually the work on the script that helped me deal with that. And in a way of saying, let her choose of whatever she wants. Whereas I can see a lot of family and friends and um, would want to choose for her or would uh, voice even anger to some of her decisions. And still, like Mathieu in the film, 
I, I really had struggle of uh, uh, letting her go. And this, yeah, this has taught me. I would definitely be different now. And if you could talk us through your wonderful, wonderful cast. I mean, Vicky Creeps, you know, who's kind of the, the queen of can it feels, you know, two, two films in a certain regard. Um, and then sort of, you know, very tragically Gaspar's uh, final film, which feels like has some kind of, uh, the fact that he's playing this character, kind of anticipating uh, a moment of mourning, feels uh, like a strange it thing is. That somehow. And of course then Bjorn is Mr. Yeah, it's, um, I mean, Vicky, I know her since a long time because we're neighbors in Berlin. She lives in like really the street, the street corner. That's where she lives. Our, our, our daughters uh, are friends since they're two. So I know her and we have always followed each other's works. We always wanted to work together, but it had to be the perfect project. She was also had a cameo in my last film, Three Days in Kibon. And this was the perfect project. It, as said, it was already really quite mature in my head, uh, but it, what, after three days in Kibon, it was a time to make that, and she, and she was the perfect, the absolute perfect actress for this role, because Vicky herself, but the character as well, she has something very strong, very here, but also something unpalpable, something elsewhere. She's here, but she's already gone basically. It's, and it's very hard. This is not something she acts and plays. She, that's just how she, she is. I mean, she could most probably also play, she plays, she could play anything, but there's something in her that's like that. She, it's also timeless. She has something timeless. Um, and it was, I, I met her and I, in a, ca in, our, in a cafe in my street, and I pitched her for an hour the whole, I, I told her the whole script. And, uh, and she finished, she cried and said, I don't need to read it, I'll do it. And then it took another three years because of financing, hard to finance something with a young woman having a mortal illness. Though it's a film that is about power, emancipation and light. Um, and then the pandemic hit and all that. Uh, and she's the one who brought me Gaspar, actually. She had just started doing quite a lot of castings in France because Phantom Third came out and was a big hit. And uh, she'd done a, a casting with him and she said to me, there's something really special about this actor and his deepness and the possibility to enter, you know, into his soil and she says for Mathieu I think he would be he could it could work so I I met him he liked my previous film he liked the script and it was a wonderful wonderful uh, work relationship of us three during the, the process of these three years and especially the shooting so yeah and the fact that he just left like that just proves one more time how nothing is controllable and how on a bit, if you look at it, I mean, what is what is time and what is age? Yeah. Everybody has their time here, and uh, and I do believe that the more we talk about it, the less, the easier it could be. Mm -hmm. um, and just finally, you know, what do you hope people will take away from watching it? Because you've touched on many points there, that that you know, kind of rather than it being sort of this soppy kind of you know melodramatic thing that we sometimes see in in these sorts of films it feels like it really captures kind of the gritty reality of you know the fact she feels like a stranger in her own skin um the the sometimes need to be selfish in these moments to do what's right f for her um and but then there's also so much optimism in the fact that she finds herself um and you know it doesn't have to be something depressing let's say you can De definitely it. Definitely, but this is the thing. That, who says death is depressing? It's only, it's the unknown does not scare me. This is what the motto should be. And also, what is sad and depressing is that um, it's for us the living, you know, uh, is, is losing the people we love. I mean, especially when they're 33 years old and she doesn't want to have the sickness either. It's, um, I'm not saying that's easy. I'm just saying that 
the only thing we know when we um, when we are born is that we will die and uh, and if we discuss it and maybe not fear it because we don't know how it's going to happen uh, but we don't know how when you're 10 you have your parents or other people saying oh in a few years you're going to hit the teenage years it's tough and we, it doesn't stop us from living it it doesn't stop us from being curious about it but I guess it's the same thing uh, so what I I just I just believe that we should, um, the more uh, we discuss about it, converse about it at an early age as well, uh, the easier it's going to be on both parties. And can you just, oh, sorry, uh, quickly tell us um, you know, what it means to have your film here in, in Cannes and what you're going to work on next? Um, I, I, am, I am absolutely, I mean the premiere was yesterday, it was I mean, it was so incredibly special to, you know, working so hard 10 years on a film and such an existential shoot and everything that happened afterwards as well. And then showing that film, like showing your, your child with the talented team and actors and producers that were on my side, hand in hand in front of this audience and in, in Cannes the audience is just just loves the cinema and loves art and and just says is basically claps to say thank you and we don't get that that much uh, and we work really hard and, and in art house cinema it's, it's it's just tough to get our audiences so these festivals are so important mm -hmm. I think I'm out of time, but it's been such a pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for sharing all that with us and enjoy the rest of your time we can. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.